Hello everyone, my name is Richard Lee. I am an associate pastor here in a local church in Bahrain. Ang Bahrain is in mid the Middle East, uh, a tiny country next to Saudi Arabia. And I've been here since 2006. And I graduated from PCGS in 1990. Kabatch mates na si Sir Lorenzo Castro and si Pinpin, si Ma'am Steph Wong. And I will be your guest speaker for today. And before we proceed, uh, please join me in a short prayer. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we praise you, God, for who you are. We praise you, God, for your love. We praise you, God, for you are holy. Praise you, God, for you are righteous. We praise you, God, for you are merciful. And we praise you, God, for you are gracious. Lord, we thank you for this moment that we are gathered to learn more of you and of your word. We ask for your Holy Spirit to work in each of us, to give us the understanding for your word and the empowerment to apply your word in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So your theme for this year is Time to Rise. R-I-S-E. R for resting in the sovereignty of God. I for increasing in the knowledge of God. S for shining as lights in the darkness. More than that theme karon. And E, for enjoying God's sufficiency in all seasons of life. So, ang atong theme is shining as, as, shining as light in the darkness. And the thrust uh, for this revolves around the fruit of the Spirit in which ang atong topic is joy. And I am so amazed at God's providence in arranging the theme as it is because... In our topic today, a joy, it is, uh, I can't explain better about joy and knowing that you have already tackled uh, the topic of God's sovereignty and uh, the, increasing, the increase in the knowledge of God. And as we revolve around the fruit of the Spirit, I expect and I suppose that uh, you already memorized Galatians 5, 22 and 23, which says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. So, meaning the moment you're born again, indwelt by the Holy Spirit, the whole fruit of the Spirit, you know, fruit, singular, it means as one package is already in you. And as you grow into the likeness of Christ, the fruit grows as well. So meaning, we increase ang love, we increase ang joy, we increase ang peace, and so on. And so, we will be talking about joy. Sa second uh, part, sa second, uh, we can't say part, but isang usam na siya ka package, you know, sa, uh, ikaduha nga word nga dimension sa fruit of the spirit. So, uh, before we proceed to dive deep about joy, let me just connect how being joyful or being a rejoicer makes us shine as lights in the darkness. You see, the joy that we'll be talking about is not the, the joy that is dependent on the circumstances around us. This is the most reasonable joy which is never shaken and thus, even amid sorrow or troubles in this world, we still rejoice we still manage to to be calm content and rejoice and when people see us as such we become an encouragement to them and by god's grace hopefully they would come to us and ask how can we still manage to rejoice amid the trouble thus by then uh, it opens the opportunity for us to share the reason of why we rejoice or to share the reason why we are joyful even in the midst of trouble and of course that is Jesus Christ the only reason why we can rejoice always 
is Jesus Christ. Now, let us begin with our topic for today and joy. So, ang topic na to is joy and the Greek word for joy in the fruit of the spirit verse is kara. Kara. Uh, I don't know if I pronounce it right, basta mo na sa dictionary means, uh, sa, ang Greek word niya is kara. K-H-A-R dash A-H which means not just regular joy but exceeding exceeding joy so exceeding cheerfulness exceeding delight and exceeding calmness even now meaning this joy is beyond measure this joy overwhelms or overcomes dark circumstances given that you know the object of your joy and you are focused on the object of this joy and since this is a fruit of the spirit so only believers can have this joy so let me ask you do people see you as a rejoicer someone who maintains a spirit of joy in all circumstances so how do we manifest this joy in life so we joy is a fruit of the spirit is down but applying it how do we make this noun a verb in this life so let us go to philippians 4 4 it's this is a very short verse but this will help us a lot sa atong topic na joy so philippians 4 4 gamit ako english uh, standard version so you may open your bible as well and read with me so it says rejoice in the lord always again i will say rejoice imagine paul wrote this to the philippian church while he was imprisoned in rome and yet ang situation ni paul while nasa sa prisuhan did not stop him from rejoicing and even prompted him to command uh, the philippian church to rejoice let me give you three reasons to rejoice always this is a key word here always no, not sometimes but always so rejoice uh, in the lord always so let's find three reasons uh, from the verse and from the supporting verses as well so first first reason why we rejoice it is a command it is a command and it is uh, uh, it is a heavy command also no, dili lang siya simply nga command, but it's a heavy command. Why? Repeat man ni Paul. No? Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. So, tanaw na to sa verse. If you go back to the verse, do we see the words please, kindly, or may I request you to rejoice? No. In fact, it's even repeated twice to make sure we got it. No? So, we are commanded to rejoice. Why? Should we rejoice? Because in the first place, we are commanded to rejoice. Paul, when he wrote this, he's inspired by the Holy Spirit. So meaning, this is God's will, and we must abide. You know? But the thing is, can you command uh, someone to rejoice? How can, how can joy be commanded? Can you tell someone to rejoice? over what is going on in Ukraine now? Or can you tell someone to rejoice, someone who just lost a loved one? Of course not. But you see, take a look at the verse again. It says, in the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Mauna ang context, ang sphere. Rejoice in the Lord always we can't rejoice always in our circumstances but we can rejoice always in the lord we cannot rejoice always in people yes from time to time we rejoice at our families triumphs and all but not always from time to time people fail us we cannot always rejoice in success not in achievements because all these things change but we can rejoice always in the Lord because He never changes. We can rejoice always in who He is 
in what He has done in our lives, in what He is doing right now, and in what He is going to do, meaning His promises. You see, in the Lord, the phrase na in the Lord, we can always rejoice. Not in circumstances, not in people, but in our relationship with the Lord, we can rejoice always. And we can comply this command. How can we comply this command? This leads us to our second reason to rejoice always in the Lord. Number two, number, second reason why we rejoice because God is sovereign. We rejoice in God because God is sovereign. God is sovereign over of everything. So I believe you uh, you understand sovereign ang sovereignty of sa Ginoo because you have already tackled it. Na nasa sa inyo ang first theme uh, sa inyo, sa theme ng rise sa first word ng R, resting in God's sovereignty. God is sovereign over everything and this is the ultimate reason why we rejoice always in the Lord. You can't help but rejoice knowing that the God whom you have an intimate relationship is in charge of everything. He is in charge of every circumstance. Nothing happens in this world out of his control. He controls it all, absolutely all of it. And so, what if God is sovereign? What is this to me, you might ask? Have you read Romans 8.28? I think familiar kayo na nato ng Romans 8.28. Sometimes people use it out of context. But let's use this in context right now. So, unsa may gisulti sa Romans 8.28, it says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. The sovereign God who controls all things is working together. For us, for our own good, in all things. Imagine in all things. Dili lang some things or uh, uh, a few things, but God, who is in control of all things, is working in all things for your good, for my good. That is so much reason for us to rejoice. So, on some of the factor, now what's the biggest factor there? The biggest factor there is that God is sovereign. You can trust Him. You can rely on Him. You can hold on to His word, to His promise that in all things, He is at work for your own good. Why? Because He is able to do that. He can do that and He will do that. Because God is faithful. Even if we are not faithful, God is faithful. What else? What about Psalm 139? Have you read it? Read the whole psalm, but let's just take one verse, verse 16. It says, Your eyes saw my unformed substance in your book were written, every one of them the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. What does it mean? It means he ordained every single detail in your life. It is absolute sovereignty. Even before it happens, even before time, the Lord ordained everything in every single detail that would take place in your life. What an amazing truth that is. Why should, okay, God ordained everything in our lives. So why should we rejoice? Remember Romans 8, 28? In all things that is happening, that has happened, and that will happen in your life. No. We're ordained by God even before the foundation of the world. For what? For what purpose? For your own good. Apil na diha ang salvation nato. So, knowing that God who is sovereign over all loves you with an unconditional love and all his intentions and works in all things are your are for your ultimate good that is so much more than enough reason for us to rejoice and this is a heavy one 
this is a huge reason for us to rejoice. You see, that's why when I saw the theme, I was happy because at least uh, I don't need to expound more on sovereignty of God because you already have tackled it. See, the more you know God, the more you rejoice. Joy is proportionate to your knowledge of God. Meaning, if you don't know much about the Lord, it's tough to rejoice. If you know a lot about the Lord, it's not too tough to rejoice. Relevant po din he ang increasing knowledge of God. The sovereignty of God and the increasing knowledge of God. No. Once I know knowledge, how much knowledge you have of God, which produces faith and love for Him, and of course, joy. So proportionate and joy. Let's go to, to our last and third uh, reason to rejoice. Our citizenship is in heaven. Asa mo na po na ko Philippians 3:20. In context, basa ho nat Philippians 4:4. But as, if you study the Bible, if you study one verse, you have to read verses before or even passages before in the same uh, forward, so you would understand better. So din ni nakita nato, uh, we should rejoice because it's mentioned also that our citizenship is in heaven. So whatever citizenship you hold. Chinese, Filipino, American, whatever it is, it is inferior to your true and eternal citizenship. Imagine. Philippians 3.20, what does it say? It says, But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Our citizenship is in heaven. No. What else? Philippians 4.3, one verse before sa atong, uh, Verse na, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. It says, yes, Philippians 4.3, English Standard Version. Yes, I ask you also, true companion, help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Every Christian's name is in the book of life. Our citizenship is in heaven our name is written, written, written there in the book of life. What else? Luke ten twenty. It says, Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. In some context, and the context here is Jesus sent 72, 70 or 72 uh, followers of him, to preach the gospel, to cast out demons, and so on. And they came back and they were rejoicing and they were saying that even the demons sub, uh, submit to them. And then Jesus told them, Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is something big. When your name is written in heaven, you're all good. So, Having your name written in heaven is more than having the power to cast out demons. So, as a Christian, as believers, your names are written in heaven. Your citizenship is of heaven. Another reason for us to rejoice. It means your ultimate destination is heaven. Adto ang atong final destination. You will definitely go home in heaven and live forevermore in increasing joy with the Lord Jesus Christ. So set your mind in things above, not on things below. Let us be heaven-oriented. And if we are heaven-oriented and all the troubles, if we are heaven-oriented, our concerns are what matters in eternity, like preaching the gospel, serving the Lord, making disciples, uh, doing good to the poor, giving to the poor, and all these things. All the troubles become menial. All the troubles in this world becomes insignificant to us because our focus is in heaven. And our joy and our faith can never be shaken if our eyes are fixed on the reason why we rejoice. Who is that is Jesus Christ. In addition, 
How did you become a citizen of heaven? This is another reason for us to rejoice. How did you become a citizen of heaven? The answer is by God's grace alone. You never deserve heaven. You never deserve salvation. You never deserve God's unconditional love. All of us, because we are all sinners. Instead, we are earning, we were earning death as we continue, as we continue to sin. However, by God's grace, by faith, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, by, by grace through faith, you have been saved. It is not of works, but it's a gift of God so that no one can boast. So it's a gift. Salvation is a gift. All the more, you don't deserve it. You did not deserve it. You receive it, but you did not deserve it. But God, nonetheless, God was gracious. And is gracious and will always be gracious. So all the more reason for us to rejoice. So always remember, why do we rejoice? Because it is a command. Number two, because God is sovereign and this God who is in control of all things is working for our good. And number three, our citizenship is in heaven. We belong to heaven, we belong to live. We are destined to live for Christ forevermore with ever increasing joy. So in the Lord, we have so many reasons to rejoice. For me, I am not deserving, but he saved me, made me his child, and promised me an inheritance in Christ. I rejoice because he hears my prayers. I can talk to God anytime. Imagine the God of the universe listens to me, listens to you when you talk. I rejoice because even at times, Things do not look favorable to me. I know that all will eventually turn out for my good. That's amazing. You know, when things seems when things seem bad, but in your heart and your mind, you know that eventually all will, all will uh, turn out well for you. That is another reason to rejoice. So always focus in the object. Of your joy which is who is Jesus Christ I rejoice because I am used by God I am used by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lord to proclaim his word and that is such a big privilege a big responsibility and yet a huge privilege for me I rejoice because I know I will have a glorified body one day the same as Jesus body and there's so much more reason to rejoice. Just focus in the sphere of the word in the Lord. What do you have in the Lord? What is offered to you in the Lord? When you say in the Lord, in your relationship with God, what does your relationship with the Lord entail? No. So rejoice in the Lord always again. I will say rejoice. Thank you. And I hope somehow we've learned something uh, today. And by this power of the Spirit, we'll be able to manifest or we'll be able to apply uh, these uh, learnings in our lives. Let us all be rejoicers because we have the reasons to rejoice. Let us pray. Father in heaven, by your grace alone, we can know and focus the object of our joy, and that is Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that by your Spirit, we manifest that joy and make us the lights of the darkness in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, and God bless us all.